Hey guys, Ryan here. Thank you for joining me for a new video. This one is absolutely crazy. This is one of the best interviews I've ever done on my channel. Now, in this one, I've got Dominic. He's a member of my Amazon FBA course, but we're not talking FBA today. We are talking all about how he is crushing it on Amazon merch. He's made over 700 sales in the last two days. And what makes this interview so special is he breaks it down for you exactly how he did it, what the niche is, how he positioned himself to capitalize on this trend. Basically, I don't think he leaves any stone left unturned. And then at the very end, we talk about parlaying this into as big of a fourth quarter as possible through some additional strategies. It's, I mean, honestly, this interview has got so much value. If you don't stay till the end, you are crazy, but I really hope you enjoy it. And if you have any questions along the way, feel free to drop them in the comments and we will do our best to get back to you. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm here with an Amazon merch rock star, Dominic. He has been absolutely crushing some big trends lately, and today he's going to share some knowledge with us. Dominic, thank you for being here. Yeah, welcome to be here. Hey man, so why don't we just get straight into it? How many t-shirt sales did you make over the past two days, roughly? Uh, I believe on Tuesday it was around 430, 435, something like that. And then yesterday was around 235 sales. So you have made basically 700 sales in a 48 hour span. And uh, dude, first of all, congrats, man. That's awesome. And do you want to just tell us, like you said, you're okay sharing the niche. Yeah, it was a, a presidential, uh, it was Biden Harris 2020 niche. Um, just kind of first to market. I think that's why it took off. And dude, that's, I mean, that is awesome that you were early to the niche. And I think that's one thing that maybe gets overlooked. Uh, because like I've talked about the, the times that I've been in your shoes and hit big trends and there's nobody that can guarantee you that you'll ever hit a trend. The biggest thing though, that you can do to, I think, distinguish yourself from the, the crowd, from the masses as a seller is be early to market. So what did you do to position yourself? Like, how did you know? Yeah, so I was already selling kind of like the pro-Biden, anti-Biden, pro-Trump, anti-Trump shirts. Right. And so I knew Joe Biden hasn't picked his VP yet. So I just did some Google research. I found out that he wanted to pick an African-American woman. And so I looked at, you know, whose potential shortlist was. It was Karen Bass, uh, Susan Rice, Kamala Harris, and I think some other person i can't remember who so what i did was i actually just created shirts like a month or two ago with their names they're still on amazon merch so you can go and you can see <laughs> people are uh, returning and, the uh they're returning actually, the other ones <laughs> nobody actually bought them actually this is like the first time anybody's actually bought them so thank god i don't have to do with the, the returns yeah. on that um so i just kind of preemptively did some research and, and listed stuff knowing that if i'm first to market that if something happened and people start going on amazon and even just type in biden and harris because right now if you type in biden harris i'm like the number three result of all Amazon for Biden Harris, not even sure, just Biden Harris. I'm like the number three result. Um, you know what I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to search it and uh, let me see if I can uh, show you. Cause I know one of my good friends, he is. Uh, Somebody's undercutting forward. the price there. And, and I don't know if you want to get into the whole pricing strategy. Cause that's really where it was like a new domain to me. Like, Holy crap, because I had it priced using your strategy of I just did $13.99 initially. I don't do the $13.07 just because I, I at least want to make some profit, even though it's like 70 cents off or yeah. 72 cents off of it. Um, so I just priced it at $13.99. And when I started getting sales and then I adjusted the price of it, uh, I adjusted it, ultimately settled, I think, at like $16.95. It takes forever to process in Amazon. So probably a good 400 sales. We're at that $13.99 price. Dude, I know when I there hear you. you know it's funny. I, yeah, I, I know that's your style because I think you showed me one of them. Or I think you told me and I kind of I kind of had looked and been like, I think I know which is yours. Because you have a yeah. couple in the style, right? Yeah, I actually I have uh, several Biden hair shirts. Uh, some in that style, some not. And they're all on the first and second page. Very nice, man. And you want to know what's funny? You see this bestseller right here? Mm -hmm. That is my uh, my friend who uh, took my merch course. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, he uh, he outpriced himself, and that's why I, I took the spot. So I, what I did strategically 
And uh, I don't know if this goes over your merch course. I did not take your merch course. I'm taking your FBA course right now is what happens when something blows up. You're like, oh, crap, what do I do? Do I charge $19.99? Do I charge $14.99? I don't want to price myself out of it. So what I did was I kind of looked at what other people were selling stuff at. And I believe this shirt for a while, your buddy shirt was selling for like $13.99 for a long right. time. And right. that's probably why his BSR and everything jumped up. But then yesterday he switched it to fourteen ninety nine. And like I'm not gonna go down to fourteen ninety nine with my shirt still selling at sixteen ninety five. You know, that's that's a dollar and change uh, profit right. uh there. And there's another you just passed a couple of my shirts. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, so I, I just like I tried to see where everybody was and who was kind of higher than me. So I just kind of, there's another one of my shirts. Um, and who awesome. bought the, the Biden Harris 2020, the bottom right to the third. Yeah. Yeah. That's, my, yeah, that's, that's a really nice shirt. Are you using Canva? One. Are you using? Uh, yep. Yeah. So Canva and paint.net, which is a free Microsoft tool. It's kind of like a Photoshop. Yeah. Uh, get paint.net for those who want to use it. Um, but yeah, I use Canva Pro and I probably do all my designs in, in Canva. And that Sunset Retro is actually from All Sunsets. So thank you. All awesome. Sunsets. Love uh, the plug, guys. All I, Sunsets I, I, in the I description. Use your link, uh, in the description for that. <laughs> thank um, you. <laughs> so, I mean, that was like literally the easiest shirt I've ever done in my life. I just, you know, I just have in Canva the 4,500 by 5,400. I just make copies of everything. Right. So I don't have to do it every single time. And I just rename it. So when it downloads, I know what it is. And it was literally sunset. And as you know, I because I did consultation with you uh, when I first started selling shirts, I was like, well, what can I do better? I'm selling, I'm selling this one shirt really well, but I'm not selling other shirts. And you're just like, just make it big. Even if it doesn't look good, just make it big because it stands out, even though it's not something I necessarily would buy, but it stands out in a sea of search results, as you can, as you can tell. So I'm like, okay, let me just make the sunset as big as possible. Let me just throw some font on there. Uh, I try to use nicer fonts. I have another one similar to this that has a nicer font, you know, it's called like yeah. gaggling or something like that. Uh, it kind of looks like the, the distress retro vintage, uh, mm -hmm. kind of text. Is that the one you use down here at the, yeah, this, this yeah. one. Yeah. 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 There's that one and there's another one. There's a couple. There's, yeah, there's one called, uh, what was it? I was just talking about it the other day. Slip in my mind. But yeah, there's another distressed one that's real popular. Yeah, so I mean, don't don't be coming in there with Times New Roman or Calibri. Or, it, right. It's not going to, I mean, it, it might sell, but you've got to stand out from the pack. But I literally just sunset with some text right. and boom. Right here is where it counts. You know, when you're scrolling yeah. through, like you need a design that pops. Yeah, good colors. That other Biden Harris is mine. I like the this one. Bright one. That's mine. This is you too. Yep. Damn, man, you're killing it. So <laughs> th there's a couple. You can see Pro Biden Harris 2020. That's the brand. You can see all of them that are in okay. there. Um, I don't care if you show people. <laughs> like you, you're welcome to join the niche if you want. It's just yeah, it's gonna be tough. But um, it's it, dude, you've already given out so much value, and yeah, like it's funny that you and uh, my other friend, his name's Brian. He's actually, if you go to my Amazon merch course sales page, like I do an interview with him back when he was in like tier two thousand. He's now in tier one hundred thousand. So, dude's wow. crushing. Um, yeah. but yeah, y'all y'all both use the same price strategy too. So yeah, I, I you know I I like the ninety fives instead of the ninety nine. So you'll see a lot of the ninety fives in there. Yes. Um, I I do list. I know shirts sell the most, but I do sell quite a few V-necks, even though there are women's sizes in the standard shirts and tank tops. Uh, so I, I didn't want to miss that opportunity. It's just if you're tier right. 10, you don't have those upload spots. So right. you just kind of have to balance that. So I probably wouldn't do that. I see other people are taking my Yeah, they're jumping on your bottom. brand. That, yeah. that, that's, this probably uh, isn't yours, right? That is not mine. None of yeah, those are figured. mine. There. Everything above that looks like it's mine. I use yeah. very distinct colors and bright colors and big designs and that's kind of what i do uh, even that boat niche right there uh i took from your top niches of the week a couple of weeks ago and it's you know people might be wondering can i go into a niche I i'm still creating biden hair shirts today and they're selling so it, you can enter the space yes you're creating competition that's fine i mean i'm still the search first search result and it's probably not going to go away for a while um, but you can still enter it. And it, to me, even same with Etsy is it, it's the SEO. It is so important. And I can't tell you how many times, because I use Merch Titans, once mm -hmm. again, I use your <laughs> affiliate. Hey, code. man, Merch Titans. Uh, I, I'm, I was running it this morning now that I'm in tier 100,000. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and I was just looking, you know, because it's a quick way to see people's bullets. 
descriptions, stuff like that. And I use your merch informer tool just to kind of, I'm shocked how many people sell shirts on Amazon that are not through merch. And I just don't know what kind of profit they're actually making. Right. On that. right. Um, but so many people do not put bullet points. It, it's just even like when you look at your top niches of the week and I'll go and I look at them, I'm like, there's no description. There's two word bullet points. I'm just like, and the SEO is just awful. Like how, how are they even selling this? So what I do is if I'm going to join that niche is I kind of look at their design. How can I improve it? Can I make it bigger? Can I change the colors, the font, whatever it is? So like in the boat one that you saw before, uh, it just looked different, brighter, bigger than the other one. Right. And then I SEO the crap out of it. A good title, a good, uh, that's a great point, man. Good feature bullet points. And I put a description for God's sakes, people put a description. Like even if it's just a bunch of mumble jumbo and you're going to see that in there, anything to give me a slight advantage, <laughs> Uh, in in the Google in the Google the Amazon algorithm I'm gonna take advantage of. Well, and, and no, and this translates this translates to Google too to help your um to help your your meta like meta information on as far as Google goes. Um, I've looked in the past. I think they may switch up which parts make its way into the like meta title, meta description, etc. But um, yeah, that stuff does factor into Google, which then helps you rank on Google straight to Amazon to your listing. So. Hundred I mean, percent agree. Even Are if you, that helps one yeah. percent, just just do it. Just copy yeah, yeah. somebody else's and just switch it a little bit. Like it's not that hard to do. Are you using the uh, merch keywords uh, Chrome extension to help avoid? Um, yes. Yeah. So that was a big thing that I hate getting rejections on what I would consider to be secondary keyword attempts. You know, if I'm like just in the the bullets or the description. And I trigger rejection there. Like, so this, this free Chrome extension that me and a friend built, um, will help you avoid. It's not perfect. It doesn't do trademark checks, but help you avoid the trigger words. Yeah. There's some random things that they will flag you on. And you're just like, I have no idea why, uh, I get stuff rejected all the time. My account has not been uh, limited or suspended. Uh, half the time it's for no reason. Like it's trademark yeah. stuff. And uh, I just email merch. Don't just reply to their rejection because they'll never reply to you. Actually, like send them a contact us and they'll get mm -hmm. back to you usually within a couple hours. And I just basically say, I don't understand why you guys rejected this. I checked the trademark. There's nothing there. And they say, OK, it's approved. Resubmit. Uh, I would say nine out of ten times that happens. Um, OK, so don't be detoured by something being rejected or that you necessarily did something bad. It's I, I don't know what kind of algorithm they're running with their their bot over there to to check that stuff but some of it's just just completely wrong and right you can actually sell stuff in that that area or there's a trademark for something that's on purses and not shirts and, right. and amazon doesn't even bother checking any of that stuff so you can but i do use your your add-on cool hey and i appreciate you sharing that it's really valuable feedback uh because yeah like this is this is a moving target, like the way that they've handled the trademark checks and their algorithm. And this year, it certainly got stricter, or at least the false positives uh, went up, you know, so people were getting rejected when they shouldn't have been. So um, that's great that you've seen some follow through and it hasn't affected your account. Like I always was a little sketched out that because uh, I mean, you used to hear about accounts getting shut down way more than you do now. I, ha I don't remember the last time I heard of somebody getting their account shut down. So maybe they are a lot easier on that um these days but you know also the follow-through with uh, a false rejection like i used to kind of bind to the stay off their radar mindset mm -hmm. but it seems like they have more of a team there now because i've heard it was a very small team at least initially but then i've also seen recently job openings for the merch team so it seems like they've taken this more seriously expanded and um they're trying to do it the right way yeah i mean just like everything don't be an a-hole about it, be nice about it, say, I don't understand why this was rejected. I even will provide a link to like the trademark, like page of the search that I did or, or something, you know, so it's the least amount of work on their side possible mm -hmm. to even doubt me. And, and, you know, my mom always says you get more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. It's no different than anything else you do in life. So, you know, just treat people with respect and they're usually willing to go above and beyond for you. Even the customer support, I don't care if you're calling your internet service provider or it's Amazon merch, if you're nice to them, you have a better likelihood of getting the outcome that you want. I yeah, hundred percent agree, hundred percent. Because I'm sure they're used to seeing like, <laughs> I mean, just to touch on like, it's funny because I've been prepping for the next semester of the college course that I teach, and it's like 
man, the number of emails I get more now than ever than it used to be. Cause I'm, in, I'm going to my seventh year teaching web development at the college level. And like, I get emails that are like fragmented sentences, no signature. And it's just like a quick question that they could easily just go find the answer to. Instead, it's like, kind of, I just feel like a little bit disrespected. It's like a educational, you know, it's a college level course. And uh, with contacting a merch admin, like, you know, keep in mind, like merch is invite only. It's a privilege to have a merch account. Mm -hmm. And every product we sell is sold by Amazon. We just get a royalty. So it's like, you really do got to remember that we're playing in their court by their rules. And it's a privilege, you know? So I agree 100%. Yeah, I mean, I've I've been trying to get my cousin into merch now. I think we're at attempt number six right now. <laughs> he just keeps getting rejected. Doesn't matter if you use an EIN or, or anything. It's just like I even submitted it for him, and it's just like for me, I just randomly one day just said, "Oh, I think I watched one of your videos." It's like the first video I've ever watched. I'm like, "Oh, let me," because I was selling on Etsy a little bit and eBay. I sold on eBay for like 15 years. Like, let me just submit an application. I didn't even like fill out anything, and I just got accepted. So I didn't even know it was like hard no. Yeah, I've heard people. <laughs> I've heard people on the sixth attempt fill in the bare minimum because at that point, I think they were just like, screw it. And then yeah. they got it. So people don't give up. If it takes six tries, it, it's free to it's free to apply. Just keep going. Yeah. You know? And uh, real quick, we're uh, just at about the time where I, you know, I don't like the interviews to go on too long because I think it gets people to drop off. And I, this has been so valuable that I don't want to deter anybody from seeing a long timestamp. But talk about what you did beyond Amazon merch to make even more money because this is a principle that I love talking about and it's something that I do myself. Yeah. So, I mean, like you said, real estate is expensive except online for the most part it's free unless there's a listing fee. Uh, so I just like, I, well, I already have an eBay account, connect Printful to eBay or Printify to eBay. It's super easy. They automate everything. You just have to spend the time listing it unless you use one of your automation tools, which I still have not. I'm hoping to win that giveaway, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're just so so expensive. It's just hard to like, unless you're making a certain amount of money, it's hard to like justify yeah. the cost of it. Because I'm just breaking even at the end of the day. It's like, is it actually worth it? Merch sites has, Merch sites has single platform now. I'm just, pu just oh, putting it do. out there. Yeah. So yeah. that, that just went live yesterday in case anybody's- I saw, I saw their email. They pulled it back and I guess they relaunched it, their 2.0. So It's I will, live now and it's, it's I, working. I will check that out. Um, but Etsy is probably my, my next biggest. I've had over 400 sales on Etsy. The last two days I've had probably about 200 sales on Etsy, totaling a couple of thousand dollars in revenue, which I make about $5 profit per item, nice. um, whether it's a shirt. Uh, I also took your advice of listing it on Amazon through FBM. So the $40 merchant thing, uh, which is a, a lot of money. But like I said, I'm taking your FBA course. So right. I, I already have it anyway, so I might as well just use it. And so I'm actually selling hats and I'm selling mugs. I'm not the type of person to buy a hat or a mug, but they are. You know, the, whoever yeah. wants to buy it, they're going to Amazon. It's the biggest platform in the world. And like I said, I, I today I'm listing some stuff on eBay. And I've already sold like 10 things on eBay. Uh, I do Redbubble. I actually do very little off Redbubble. I don't know why. Uh, I've got like five whole sales on Redbubble. I Redbubble like how you can do maximum saturation. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's a little bit difficult. And then, yeah, those are kind of just my main ways of doing it. It's just kind of tedious to upload to multiple platforms. And I can see why automation tools help. Because it's like, okay, I put it on merch, but now they have a different title limit than Etsy. Etsy is, has a very generous title limit, but I yeah. want to maximize the SEO of that. And then at, eBay has a different title limit, like 80, 85, 140, and it just kind of becomes annoying. Uh, so you just have to I, – I don't put every single shirt on those platforms. I put, like, the top sellers. Merch is by far my number one, then mm -hmm. followed by Etsy, and then I'll trickle into, like, the Ebays and the Red Bull Red Bubbles, especially as it's – pretty much automated as they fulfill stuff so i'll do like the biden harris stuff on there because i know it's going to sell and then i'm also dabbling i've been watching your kdp course uh your mini course on kdp mm -hmm. um to convert them into journals so i was actually going to do that today so i'm looking forward to spending hours on my computer <laughs> trying to trying to do that because i don't have automation tools for it so i'm going to manually have to do that and, hey and you know what just to bookmark that, like, yeah, it's good to learn the stuff the right, like the actual way first anyways, regardless, before you jump into the automation, you know, to understand what's really going on, what you're doing. So that's good yeah. that you have the right mindset about it. But it's literally because I'm currently furloughed from my job right now. I work for the cruise industry. As you can tell, it's not the, the best industry to be in right now, but hopefully it will recover. But I'm taking this opportunity to see if I can just do this on my own, because if I can make 
you know, $300 a day sustainably, which is also why I'm taking your FBA course, which by the way, I'm going to launch two products. Very nice. Um, they awesome. just ship both samples today. So I, I won't get into that. We'll talk offline about that, but I am taking your course on that. And so I'm trying to find a way if I can sustain $300 a day, I can just quit my job. You know, I, I, I have like a six figure job and I would much rather do this every single day. It just feels more rewarding, more fulfilling uh, as I'm sure, you know, you had the same thing go through your mind when you quit yours, I think in March. So that that's yep. ultimately where I want to go. And this is an opportunity. I'm taking it. You know, I was listening to the rich dad, poor dad book. I don't know if you've ever read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Audio book. Audiobook. And, and it's kind of like everybody gets opportunities, you know, they get lemons, but most people don't turn it into lemonade. And so I'm taking this as my opportunity to try to turn it into lemonade. If I fail at it, I fail. I've tried. But at the same time, my mindset is I won't allow myself to fail. So I'm just taking it, running with it, and seeing how far I can go. Yeah, man. I, and that sounds – it just sounds like myself. You know, that's how I felt too. You know, and I think there's much – I think there's a lot to say about trying and, and failing even it's way better than not trying in my mind. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. And then also taking the route of diversification, you're giving yourself the best odds of succeeding. Um, anybody that tells you, yo, follow this get rich quick scheme, like quit your job. Look, I have, you know, it's like, dude, that's all everybody that says that is full of shit. So I love that you're doing it like similar to how I did it, you know, just take the slow, practical, methodical approach and then when, if you get, if you do end up quitting your job, like, you know, you'll be, you'll, you will be secure, not just reliant on FBA income or merch income solely, you know? And that's like the most common thing I see is people doing exactly what you did or the inverse, like parlaying print on demand profits into FBA or being on FBA and hearing about me using my seller central account, 40 bucks a month and making an extra thousand plus a month just by tying in the FBM stuff. And then eventually when you feel like it, man, I'll walk you through POD turbo because <laughs> it's so awesome. Like now I don't even have to push the products to FBM uh, seller central anymore. It just does it for me. So yeah, it's just, it's so tedious to manually do everything, especially when you sell on so many platforms. And I just feel like it's hard for me to just not push something because it's like, well, if I spend just 10 minutes, it can turn into a hundred bucks. And, and I, it's just very hard. Like I literally spend, more time working on this than my I did on my nine to five job. It, it's not something you, I can just do in an hour. Like I, I spend eight hours, my wife and son come home and then at night I, I spend more time, whether it's, a, I try to do one design a day and how can I optimize this as much as possible and what are competitors doing? Because if I'm not mm -hmm. looking at what everybody else is doing, like pricing, like on Amazon merch, if I would just put 1999, which is what my initial uh, thought was, I, let me just 1999 and I can make $7 profit a shirt. And it's like, well, now I'm pricing myself out of the first page. So it's right. just, sometimes you just got to stop and think and just not, not go an extreme route. So that's, I, I know I have to kind of take it down a little bit and, you know, I, I feel like amped up the last two or three days without the sales going on. So, you know, trying to take a little bit of a break from it, but at the same time, still try to grow it as much as possible. So. Yeah, man, that's awesome. And then also, you know, we know the fourth quarter is approaching and with these sales, you're going to get tiered up. You're going to have more space. You're going to have to adjust your strategy a little bit. Maybe then you might consider, I'm just saying the Merch Titan single, single platform. Yeah, and I, I, I just got to look at it. The original one was like $89. I'm like, well, if I don't make $89 in, in yeah. revenue, it's already kind of. Um, yeah. So it's just, I mean, for you and for anybody else out there, that's got a lot of upload slots that aren't filled. Trust me, if you haven't been selling print on demand in the fourth quarter, it's going to be crazy. This year's going to be, the, honestly, this year's going to be huge. We have seen in the past where they run out of inventory. So my only, like what goes through my mind first is I hope they don't run out of inventory, you know, because we've oh, seen they, that they, before. They ran out of used shirts for my Biden Harris stuff. They just stopped. It's just gone. Yep. <laughs> like, okay. How does Amazon run out of used shirts for that? So. Hey, Printful's having su stock supply issues too. So, um, Again, coming back to the diversification point, it's okay to list t-shirts through FBM because if Amazon merch goes out of stock, like your FBM shirts, it'll be like deja vu of earlier this year when um, everybody that had shirts available through, you know, Seller Central all of a sudden saw like a massive spike. You know, you can go back in my income reports and mm -hmm. see that. Um, so yeah, so, hey man, I really appreciate you taking the time to be here. This interview was pure gold and uh, yeah, any, any last words? No, I mean, I... I've learned so much from you and I'm not just saying that to stroke your ego. Like I don't watch many, 
you know, I'm, I'm 34 years old, you know, I'm not looking for a get rich quick, I'm looking to do it the right way to build a business, you know, I have, you know, my master's degree, I've done, I've done the whole education thing. And I've worked at, you know, Fortune 500 companies and stuff. And it's like, well, what can I do for myself? And taking watching your videos, I literally watch every video. And I can tell you, you're the only person on YouTube that I actually put bell notification on everybody else. I don't care. I'll just kind of stumble upon it. <laughs> um, and it doesn't even matter if I don't sell on the platform. Like I never sold on Redbubble and then you did Redbubble videos and I started like, eh, let me just upload to Redbubble and same with the KDP. Let me just try the KDP and see what happens. So I appreciate all the videos you make. I do know because I've done YouTube videos in the past, how much time it takes to actually edit them. And I don't think people realize even this one video is going to take forever for you to upload, edit, tags. So I, I appreciate yeah. everything that you do. I, I mean, I know. You can make Google AdSense money on it, and hopefully you can grow it. I've seen your channel grow substantially over the, like, the last couple months. I think you're close to 30,000 or at 30,000 subscribers right now. Dude, so, I blinked, uh, and I gained 800 subs in a day. And yeah. I was like, is this an error, or am I really at 30K? It I didn't even get to celebrate. It just happened. It's piling on once you get to like a certain thre threshold of like 25K. So who knows? A month from now, hopefully it'll be a 50K. And yes, you don't sir. forget about the little people. Yes, sir. Hey, man, I really appreciate all the kind words. And um, yeah, man, just happy to see what you're going to accomplish in the fourth quarter with FBA, with uh, FBM, with merch, Etsy, Redbubble, all the above, man. I'm excited. And uh, yeah, thanks for being here. Yeah, I appreciate it.